All right, I'd uh, like to welcome all of you tonight to the uh, College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'll be filming this event tonight. Brown will be taking over as soon as he collects money. The uh, format of the college is as follows. We have a speaker who speaks for a while, which tonight will be Charlie. And he's talking about where our Christmas gifts really come from. The second part will be the question and answer session. And the third one will be our infamous rebuttal. Well, he is about to be ready, as we have two rules. One is one full at a time for the rest of you guys. Down and uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, that we don't insult anybody here personally. Uh, all right, Charles Paydock, our speaker. All right, thank you. Yay! eclectic as usual here. Uh, yes. A way of introduction, I'm going to talk a little bit, a little bit about the history of Christmas because I think we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, it's gradual commercialization. Uh, the current uh, radio off, whatever it is. It'll be over in a minute, Bill. Definitely the three. Okay. All right. Yes, honey. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, current spending patterns and uh, demographic type information. Then we're going to look at manufacturing in China, electronics industry, the toy industry, the manufacturers. Get into uh, um, uh, minimum wage issues. And uh, then finally I'm going to conclude on how to simplify your holiday. And I know you're all going to follow my advice, as you always do. But uh, here we go with the, and if I fail to speak into this, please say microphone or something, and I'll get right back to it. Uh, let's see here. Why are you behind me? Because I wanted to get you in better light. Oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is our traditional image of Santa's workshop there. If you can't see, please move. Uh, okay. And I did, I think this is perhaps a bit more realistic uh, indication of what's going on at the North Pole. Santa's sitting on his throne and the elves are doing all the heavy lifting. And I think that's the case as well. We will see. Uh, just a little bit of history here, because Brown was talking about St. Nick uh, last week. He's a Turkish individual, and the way the story goes, uh, there was a young girl who wanted to get married, didn't have any money for her dowry, so he threw some money through a window, and it fell into her stockings, which were hung by the chimney to dry, and she was able to get married. Uh, yeah. Isn't that nice? Uh, you can see he was a pretty simplistic uh, little thing, maybe a little, a few little simple toys. Uh, he's no longer saint, by recognized by the Catholic Church, but uh, over the years you could see. And he came. And the only amazement about this, he's always there in the daytime, not sneaking around like in the middle of the night. Like we got him. You know. But a uh, pretty simplistic little thing, maybe dropped a few apples and things like that. Of course, he's been modernized, Thomas Nash and Queen Victoria and things like that. Now we got him in a Chevrolet with, or Ford. <laughs> so he's been updated and put in a red suit there. At least it's an American yeah. car. <laughs> <laughs> now, traditionally the holiday I look upon it is it, it began, you know, there were nice customs here. I actually did this when I lived in the country. I went out to the woods and chopped down a tree. You might go out with dad or grandpa and select a tree. Uh, I was a docent on Pioneer Life at the museum here for 10 years. And uh, yeah, it was a simple little affair. You might make homemade ornaments or string popcorn, things like that. 
Uh, and maybe get a gift or two, nothing terribly, maybe a sled if you were really lucky. I have to use this, some books that I was reading. I actually I have one here. I'm reading, whoops. Uh, some nice little stories on the original meaning of the holiday. And I can highly recommend these. They're pretty good little collection of stories, nine and ten stories. <laughs> um, and, and little episodes of around Christmas. Okay, whoops. Okay, the Victorians, and the way I think most people celebrated the holiday was a family gathering and essentially a meal. Uh, was the focal point of the dinner. Uh, it would be a dinner. Uh, and I don't know if we had this commercialization aspect to it, but I believe that served uh, most people identified the holiday with a Christmas dinner, and we still, in many respects, still do. Uh, being a transportation guy, there certainly is an aspect of the holiday of getting together, traveling, and being with your uh, relatives, friends, nuclear and extended family here. And this is uh, nice. There's some people who took the Union Pacific. I like this kind of, you know, what was Grandma Moses kind of stuff, full part. Uh, that's a nice little picture. Uh, just, I just wanted to throw this in there, being a railroad guy. The railroads uh, certainly met the needs of the public in getting around for the holiday. This is an element of the holiday I think is perfectly cool. I think it's very nice that we travel and get together and uh, in a situation at least once a year. I, I sent this as a Christmas card one year from the railroad. Um, this is a picture that was done of the Union Station in Chicago by Norman Rockwell. So it's just kind of one I had in my picture file. Here's another one I used one year, but this, now we're getting into the details. That Americans will spend uh, seven point hours on average traveling, uh, and more than 10, 10 hours or more. And thinking about it myself, I've had made some trips when I lived outside of Chicago, home for the holidays and or whatnot. I did traveling myself, so. This is an aspect I think is kind of nice and should be fostered. I, I don't, you know, I've always been mystified why Christmas is in Santa Claus is associated with trains, but I'll fully gladly accept it. Uh, this is another one from one of our Christmas cards from the, the railroad there. Now, a lot of people won't be taking real railroad trains. A lot of people, this, you know, CTA couldn't get a correct schedule. <laughs> Of <laughs> where this train ran this year, it was anybody's guess. <laughs> I saw it. The, I saw. I saw it at the Cumberland L station today. <laughs> we were laughing. Every year it's like that. But it was a schedule of red eye. Yeah, that's yeah, fiction. Yeah, what? Yeah. All right, getting back to it. Uh, as you can see, the holiday was essentially. I still think, uh, yes. even around the turn of the century, n not a not that big a deal in terms of. Uh, you can see the trees were simplistic. You might get together and string popcorn, something like that, or the kids at most would hang a stocking, and get little gifts of little candy or something, or what the antique collectors call smalls, little gifts, little. Actually, those are kind of nifty little toys, but uh, they call them smalls. Of course, uh, Coca-Cola got involved, and they certainly fostered the concept of the holiday. I have no idea why. I don't see the association between Santa Claus, Christmas, and Coca-Cola. <laughs> but they've been marketing it for a hundred years with some degree of success. Uh, well, their colors, of course, they're like, um, you know, the other day I was in Atlanta, and they want 17 bucks to go to the Coke Museum, and I think that's nuts. I have a corporate museum here. But gradually, of course, in the 20th century, uh, the department stores, and we'll get into retailing later. So this is a little bit out of sync, but we're going to cover retailing in some detail. But I am going to cover this aspect now that it, the commercialization did come in, of course, the department stores and these windows. 
1924, uh, in New York City, they began the Macy's Parade. I actually lived in Central Park West, where they inflated those balloons. And we used to all go out a couple days in advance and watch them do it. Uh, and the parade's on Central uh, Park West. Okay, just some things I found. They, I deal in stock photos and advertising, but you can see the corporate mentality started coming in with the holidays. Uh, I like this guy, where's the funny snow here? <laughs> they put some corn, some uh, washing snowflakes or something at him. Uh, but gradually it started doing, and of course, full swing, the department source. I didn't even think this is a Chicago Fields or something. Is this it's Harrison Marshall thing? Fields. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Yeah. They used to really do it up. So we yeah. see that gradually and gradually we got from the pioneers into this progression here of this. Now, I'm going to focus a bit on, I said toy manufacturing, and I was thinking, I think as when I was growing up, with the exception of television, we just started in advertising, but you might find toys advertised in, in comic books. And uh, actually, I think the first toy advertised on TV was one of these little bake ovens. Um, but actually, I thought this was a pretty nifty little, uh, I would have bought one of these. It looks pretty cool, you know. <laughs> I wish I could buy one now and wear it around the neighborhood. You know? Well, you get girls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Invisible, I walk around. <laughs> Anyhow, gradually it grew. This little, I like this girl. Now, she's really helping to grow up to become a secretary, <laughs> which I don't think is politically correct today. And I want to talk a little bit here because I'm a railroad guy. Uh, one of the things that kind of, actually, you can see the toy industry was coming in. At least for me, at least, and us were the line out trains. This oh. pukey little kid keeps growing up all over the place. Actually, I have this engine. That's my uh, flagship engine here. <coughs> now we see here the reason I put this in there, not just Lionel. Lionel actually began the thing of putting out a catalog every year. They were marketing the children. And, uh, whoops. I am sorry, folks. Technology. Oh, okay. Uh, just a little about the commercialization of toys. Lionel used to put these out every year in the fall. And they're a very unusual format. Uh, this kind of widespread, but it gave a whole train set. And these were grabbed up as soon as they came out. They're still put out every year. They even charge a dollar and people, I'll, I'll buy them, uh, to see what new accessories are coming out and things like that. One of the things I want to mention about this is that this is amazing. They even put a book out about inside the Lionel train factory, which is here. You could buy one for your own little railroad. And there's the actual factory in Michigan or where it used to be in Michigan. They're now made someplace in Asia. We have not been able to ascertain precisely where. <laughs> but that's what's left of the Lionel train factory here in the States. I just threw this in there. This is part of our railroad, uh, New York Chicago Railroad Christmas card this year. I, I gathered all a number of things. But every year, actually, this is a pretty, I didn't know this car even existed. I'm going to get one of these. <laughs> that's pretty cool myself. But, all right, uh, just one more thing about trains. Toys get updated, even though you got the basic train. But now you can get, you got to get a laptop version, you know. But you can control your trains uh, using your laptop. Oops. Okay. Commercialization was not limited to children. Uh, as you can see, different ads coming in. Uh, a new stoves from women, refrigerators. I think this is a very good idea. If I was married, I would buy my wife a stove. 
I went no microwave. I'd buy a and a vacuum cleaner. That's her. Hey, how come vacuum cleaners are like four or five hundred dollars? And the tube. But yeah, you can see, no jewelry. This is good. You know, cook food. You know, don't save. It probably pay for itself because you wouldn't need out. You know. Yeah. Hey, yeah. All right. Anyhow, some other aspects uh, with technology and realizing, I guess, the American dream was this concept of decorating your home. Uh, if one bulb goes out, the whole set goes out, some of these things. My neighbor used to have one of these in a window every year, bubble light. But anyhow, is that okay? they even got a contest on, want, the, on the cable I was watching. Some pretty nifty houses in here. Some other things, some of you older people remember these crazy things. Uh, my, my unit at work, we still put one up. We had one for years ago. But my boss refused to buy a new one. He, um, this, there's some other things I came across. Some people always got to improve on it. Actually, as a federal employee, I had a, I always still do. I put up a red, white, and blue Christmas tree. Um, Thank you. Let's see. Now, getting into the gift thing and back basically to our central theme, we have a little break here, um, is the extent that people go bizarre, crazy in this gift purchasing. And I found that people actually will make these expenditures and then they post photos of their their acquisitions on the internet. Look at this. You can't hardly even see the tree here. <laughs> I mean, this is this is probably like about for three people like that. I mean, honestly. And there's other one. Look at this. You know, uh, this is getting a little intense here. I don't know if we really need to go quite that far. Uh, and showing, uh, oh, and this one I like. They got rid of the tree altogether. It's there just pure Christmas go. presents, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Woody. Oh, they did have a baby, oh, baby Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they got rid of the tree altogether. Actually, this happened in Greece a few years. Since we're still on trees, about five years ago, they were protesting. And the hoodlums burned up the Christmas tree. And that's terrible. <laughs> People are running away. Look at that. <laughs> I'll tell you that Christmas. <laughs> Anyhow, of course, this whole mania of acquisition, this rabid consumerism manifests itself when it begins on Black Friday. Yeah. Right. And there we go. Look at these. I have no idea what this is. I just don't even have that many people to give gifts to. <laughs> Honestly, this woman actually has become somewhat famous uh, for this photo here. Her act of desperation to get in and acquire, make purchases. Now uh, this is some of the look at it four hours deals. This this is the kind of thing that uh, we're at we've reached the pinnacle of right now. All right, now we're going to get into the the data, boys and girls. But how much shopping do we do? On average, seven and a half days each year. That's full days we spend shopping. In Chicago, we average three and a half hours per week. Or no, on average, three and a half in the country. In Chicago, six and a half. We're only exceeded a little bit by the residents of New York. Those Chicagoans are way up there. You guys. Yes, sir. And on, for each season, they average about 15 hours, which is amazing. You'll spend as much time shopping as you will spend associating with your extended nuclear family or friends. Okay, and you can see there. Also, we get into a thing here. <coughs> if you'll see here, uh, online shopping. Now, I think this figure here is a little high. I get figures of more 10 to 15 percent. It is growing. Uh, I think it's not seasonal, though. 
I think that's a little high. I came across Tiffin Tigger Sweet, and we could argue either way. I thought I'd do a little online shopping myself and spruce up my wardrobe, so I thought I'd get myself a Lennon cap <laughs> and walk around the neighborhood like Comrade Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see it's you can add the cart here. Uh, however, why didn't I do it? Because one of the things that's out there, and this now we're getting into it, is and this is a little out of sync, but it's relevant at this point, I think, is what are you doing when you purchase something in online? Especially Amazon which we'll see is now among the top 10 retailers in the United States. They just made, I think, number nine. But they are one of the worst employers in the United States. Uh, they're challenging Walmart uh, for the global retailing. And a picker has to search 800,000 800, square feet of space to find goods and walk as many as 11 miles per shift. And they're supposed to find one product to, for delivery every 33 seconds. And they have a quasi, this is a nutty company. Uh, this is bizarre. And there's more to it. I could go on and give a whole lecture just about what's going on at Amazon. If you think if you buy something online, you're not hurting somebody. Yes, you sure are. Uh, they actually tag each employee with little devices. They actually called one guy in because they wanted to know why he used one room, one restroom, when there was another one that was closer and he was wasting company time. Yeah. Uh, they carry little things. You even get a message if you're falling behind schedule. Uh, this was great. This is an incident. This happened in some other locations. And in Allentown, PA, uh, their center, fulfillment center, the temperature went up there. They don't air condition warehouses. Anyhow, Amazon actually stationed paid for paramedics and ambulances to park outside of the fulfillment center. Rather, I mean, they wouldn't give them a day off or anything. You know, this is strange. And they gave them cooling bandanas. I mean, this is uh, this is a guy who's his name is Jeff Bezos. And there's been uh, some action already on organized labor. They put on Amazon shipping containers <laughs> on their heads and march around. But this is some of the things I could have put in any other facilities. This is so, think about it when you're ordering online. And this, this guy is ruthless. This, 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 is, this guy's like a Nazi. I'm, I'm serious. Um, one other aspect of commercialization. It really bothers me. I like the History Channel, and I'm watching it late at night, and suddenly I don't got no more history because some guy's trying to sell me a TV set to see tomatoes or these other things, the infomercial. This is the I'm just bacon. Who's gonna, who's gonna use this thing? <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> They average, <laughs> they average about a 30% return. <laughs> yeah, this is your business. Yes, sir. I don't know, but they're all over the place, these infomercials. All right, facts and figures. What are we talking This is a fun one. I like this one here. Okay, the average is, and it's gone up. I thought it was around 600. Now it's 737. On average, we spend. And you can see about 400 bucks for your parents, loved ones, 72 bucks for your friends. Co-workers only get about 25 bucks. Pets. Get more. Your pets actually get more. They deserve it. Corey. Okay, Howard. You want to hold one for later? No, I don't like that. Okay, and they'll also spend 100 bucks. On food and candy, greeting cards, flowers is a lot, I thought. That's one sixth of all retail sales in the United States. So this is the big season. This is when they're making money. Uh, by the way, this one I like. Very, when you're shopping, people roughly spend 59% of the shoppers spend 139 bucks on themselves. 
That's what I always used to do. <laughs> I forget them, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, nice looking hat or something here. All right, some more data here. We'll get through the boring stuff. I don't expect you to read it all, but I put my notes on here because I didn't want to have to read it off the book. But it, the industry is about three, three trillion dollars during the holidays. Fifty percent shop for clothes, electronics, one third for toys. Gift cards are getting up there, real popular, and they employ about seven hundred and twenty thousand people especially for the holidays. Uh, there's one and a half million retail establishments. Most are small. Uh, one third don't even have an employee. And 43% have fewer than 10 employees. This comes out in labor things. When you hear things that make labor laws and apply to employers of 50 or more, this applies throughout the capitalist <coughs> system. Uh, these labor laws apply to nobody. Um, let's see, largest stores are the big ones, okay, and they're about most of the sales there. So you can go to this guy, the plastic store, you can go and see this guy here, you know. All right, breakdown. Where do we get from Asia? Here and now we're getting into it. Big thing, toys. Okay, we're talking about Christmas gifts, infants wear, right below it, plastic, items, things like that. So these things are coming, you can, it's amazing, toys are, are out there exceeding in some of these other products here. What, what, what I mean, the numbers in there? Yeah, what's twos? twos. 37 tails, or what do you mean? Yeah, what's twos? I used to know, I don't, I'll think of it. I forget, I, I'd have to think. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't know. This chart is just basically the growth, it's not the total. So, but I wanted to throw it in there as the best one I found. You can see the basic aggregate dollar. It shows the 10 year trends. That's what the big green is, but you can basically see how much we're, we're bringing in on this. Okay, and here's another. You can see in terms of imported toys, the US probably exceeds the rest of the world combined. Okay. Uh, all right, we're going to go into China now. It has the largest workforce in the world. Uh, it has over about 700 million people looking for jobs. Uh, half its workforce is on the farm, uh, which is 100 times more than we have. Uh, and 50 million people leave rural areas in search of urban jobs every year. Uh, most of those who leave are young, you know, about se over 75%. So, how are you going to keep them down on the farm when they can get to the factory, you know? Okay, uh, you don't have to read all of this. I'll kind of summarize it here. They have two categories of, actually three, two, two major categories. There's extensive use of what they call dispatch <coughs> labor. Uh, and you're hired by agencies. Of course, there's reasons for this. Culpability laws and things. Uh, it's somewhat like day labor, hiring people instead of hiring. We'll get with some more on that. Um, they're not treated like direct hire workers. They got severance pay, uh, the shifts and so forth. Actually, they can, they can do, push them around a lot easier. The other one that's amazing, they have a category called student interns which is significant and the children, the students don't really have any choice. They're forced to work by their teachers. They don't want to work there, they want to learn. Um, but if they're told unless they work, they will not graduate. So this is, it permeates the culture here. But this is just one. Um, I just came across, look at that, making a bear, look at this. Yeah. Look at that, oh yeah. What are they doing making American flags? Anyhow, this company gave a warning to 100,000 people to work hard on the job today 
or work hard to find a job tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that, that's free market capitalism. That's why I had finest. Yeah, work hard tomorrow then. I love that if you ride bikes to work, you had to ride a confession. That's, this is going to mix this stuff up. All right, I won't dwell on this. You don't have to read all of this. There's been all kinds of incidences in the factories, clothing in particular, and the toy factories. It's not possible even to keep up with these. This was a major one when I was putting this together. Uh, a really, uh, this was a massive explosion, as you can see. Uh, incidences like this are fairly common. They, they're talking about occupational safety and health. This is not working conditions. This is the entire place going up in flame or exploding. This is, there are many, many instances of this. Uh, this factory here, I love this here. They have 22, 20 to 30 new employees every day. And they're not trained. Okay. <laughs> now, in, in the clothing factory as well, we talk about the triangle shirt, waist fire. But in Bangladesh, by the way, the interesting thing about Bangladesh is those engaged in clothing manufacture, and you keep this with you, there's one thing you remember when you buy clothes. The, cl the people involved in the clothing industry are the worst paid employees in the world without exception, the clothing industry. But Bangladesh has uh, 4 million people, uh, 3 million of them working, at some 4,500 factories. Um, there's been, a, that's what I mean, there's been at least 33 major fires. So I mean, it, this is not a unique event. Uh, the gate, gates are padlocked just like triangle, so that workers do not leave the workplace and raw materials do not get stolen. Over and over again. It's, it's the same thing. <laughs> These are true. Actually, Bangladesh is a tough place. I went to a lecture by the women that were organized, and trying to organize them, and they came up with the scheme where they were accused of committing murder. Just like, just like the Wobblies here in the States. Okay. Um, one thing about toy manufacturing, now we're going to get into the details here, we're still on the hazardous materials, is that, I'll summarize this for you, is that um, the pla plastic use is uh, inherent in, in toy manufacturing, but they have no regard whatsoever about the hazardous situation in dealing with plastic here. And the amazing thing about this is, those colors, plastic eye-catching colors, are the most harmful type to deal with. Um, and kids like those, so they use colorful plastics. But you can see now, the hazard isn't simply to the workers, it's also to the kids who play with these things. We'll get into that. Okay, let's take a look at one of the major players on this, uh, Mattel. And they have a hundred suppliers in China, which steals millions. This isn't me from his employees. This is a this is a no good company, man. Uh, they suppose that this throughout this thing, they come up with these standards or codes of conduct, and they give them all kinds of names. It's it's non it doesn't exist. Nobody enforces them. They have no meaning whatsoever. Oh, we put these out, and we ensure our suppliers do this, yada, yada, yada. Absolutely, totally, categorically nonsensical. Nonsensical. I'll show you organizations that are trying to verify this. Uh, they dictate to these companies what they want, when they want it, and how much they're going to pay. Right here. There's fierce competition. This is a Walmart model, man. They tell the, and when they when say jump, the only thing these companies ask is how high, right, and how often. Okay. Oh, one other thing. Since we're on Barbie here, I love this. They try to 
They tried to tone down Barbie a few years ago. They had a plain Pamela, and then they came out with this other version. She's like a, I don't know, it's plain, <laughs> plain babe. <laughs> Anyhow, now we'll take a look at the mouse. Uh, Disney here. Okay. Uh, I, we don't need to read all of this, but this gives you some idea of what they've got their store down there on State Street. Uh, this is some of their working conditions if you want to buy the view. They, uh, they work putting 330 hours a month, seven days in a row. And that's what I mean. They, there are gloves, but they don't use it because uh, it slows down production. Uh, they make about 50 cents an hour. Actually, a lot of employees don't even eat because they're trying to save money and things like this. The story's about that. Uh, now, Disney claims that they're going to be getting out of the business. Um, that's difficult. This is a secret company. This, these guys... These guys uh, keep a real lid on, and Disney always has. Why? Why? I don't know. Why? But they are, they are not, they're protecting themselves from anything harmful. Believe you me, they guard their, you know, you can never get a copyright, I don't care who you are. You're going to almost never, like a non-profit or something, unless they're making some money, you ain't never going to use a mouse or any other characters. Absolutely, they will catch you and nail you right away. This is, they are not, you know, Snow White. The, anyhow, a guy went to China and he put out a, a whole series of photographs called the Toy Story. And these are some of the photographs that he took. These are the kids lining up. They make them line up so they're not late to work. They get breaks. Yeah, you know, yeah, just go take a little. You know, actually, I had a guy in the government who did this. <laughs> he has to do it all the time. <laughs> they asked me one time, they said, Where's Frank? You know, I didn't know what to say. You know, he's sleeping under his desk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to snitch, man, you know, I don't know. Maybe a cafeteria, I don't know, in some place. Okay, some more things here. You can see assembly line. Uh, this is, uh, there. Okay, a little bit about plastics. Quickly, we're never three, more than three feet away from plastic. Oh, and electronics, too. Uh... These go on the iPhones. 244 million tons of toxic chemicals are used for them. There's no inherently safe raw plastic. So in these factories, it's simply something you cannot make safe. And uh, additives that, as we mentioned, the colors uh, are leach out. I won't go into detail on this. There was a big deal on this one because it happened in New York City, which is a major shipping port. These guys were running a real business, fraudulent, dangerous choice. They had five tractor trailers when they got caught, estimated over 10 minutes. This is not just a little thing sneaking in. This one drew some attention because it was New York boys. Okay. Uh, well, there's a... a thing you can call in and report toys that are dangerous. Um, the environmentalists are doing this. Uh, I like this, being a librarian, you can get a copy, oh, get, let's get our daughter a book. <laughs> but if you got this touch and feel book, it had a lead content seven times above the... Se I don't know how you could make a lead book, but they did. <laughs> I don't know how what they did, you know. Okay. All right, I'm going to look a little bit at toys here. Take a little little break because we can't be too much. you got a lot of information here. But I looked at some of the toys of the past. Frank, this is for you. Uh, you can get this Atomic Energy Lab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> for Johnny. <laughs> oh, look at you get you get all kinds of them here. Hey, could you get a thorium one? I was gonna put one. <laughs> look at this kid. Hey, yeah. Oh, I got nuked. I got nuked juice. <laughs> Actually, I bought one of these for a dollar. I didn't want it when I was a kid. Actually, I used to, they used to set up Lionel, I left this out of the sort. To market toys, they used to set up Lionel train sets in the department stores. Every year, I would run the day after Christmas and buy those used equipment, because they were reduced. And that's why I have one of the finest collection of Lionel rolling stock. Okay, and they even had it. But I bought, remember I bought this one, it was only like a dollar, so I had to sell. Oh, there's some. There's all kinds of phony, phony toys that the internet boys were putting on. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> and they put this one up there too. There's a little kid. He got his gun and his eye out there. The Red Rider. He shot his eye out. <laughs> Uh, oh, here, yeah, here's where your cops here. Yeah, shoot them up, say. Here you go. You can raise your junior cop, you know. Almost the Breaking Bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this one here. You can make your daughter a cleaning lady. <laughs> oh, there's a, a, yeah, a mom or you got to... Oh, it's hey, look, it's got a little targets day. there. There's a Roshima, you know. I like this one here. Here's a hazmat toy. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a real game. This is not a phony one. War on Terror? <laughs> hey, let's play, you know. Here's another game. Just came out. Strike. Where you, you actually, you have a board. Yeah, you go on strike. <laughs> yeah, that one just came out on the market. Oh. And we'll talk about this next week. You can get a Jesus doll, turns water into wine. <laughs> He's 5,000. <laughs> Actually, you get fish with it. Can you see it? They're in there. <laughs> There's fish. <laughs> and lungs. <laughs> I'm going to burn it all over this one. And this is what I like. You can get a little money machine for your kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to teach commercialism too much, you know. Right. My, you know, <laughs> worldly materialism at a young age. You can play banker. Oh, I need ten bucks, you know. <laughs> Look at this, they got Chinese money. Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. <laughs> Look at the toy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I just, here's another one I came across on the library, you know. That new book that just came out, Charlie and the Christmas, there's me and my Christmas kitty. Charlie may not have put a kitty on his Christmas list, but he learns that if you keep an open heart, new friends can come in. Uh, there he is. Look at there he is. There. Charlie and, Charlie, they got all kinds, Charlie and the dog does all kinds of things. He gets all sorts of, there's a whole series of these. Aww. Anyhow, this is more like what Charlie and the cat are up to. <laughs> hey, screw Santa. <laughs> all right, now we're going to get into electronics. We were talking there with Lee. Okay, if you see here, it says, designed by Apple in California. And American global, uh, yeah. All right. yeah, designed by Apple in California, but what does it say here? It's assembled in China. In China. <laughs> they're trying to fight this now. They're claiming their stuff's made in America. It's a lot of hooey. Uh, they're made all over the place. But this is phony. This is phony as can be. Um, okay. Foxcom is probably the largest corporation in this Iowa that you've never heard of. 
50% of the electronics used in the world is assembled, made in some fashion by Foxconn. Um, they make uh, Blackberry, iPad, iPhone, Kindles, Playstations, uh, even for you, a Packard, Apple, and Microsoft. Uh, actually, I believe their employment is up to a million now. Uh, they came to, in, to, got in the news because 150 employees threatened to commit suicide. Foxconn responded by giving psychological examinations of their employees and getting rid of the ones who might commit suicide instead of getting rid of the situations that lead to suicide. They actually had employees sign a statement that they will not commit suicide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they got rid of the people who are they determined were vulnerable. Can you, is that just cause to get removed from a position? Um, yeah, sure. Now they have mega factories. This one here, uh, has 450,000 employees within a walled complex. Nobody knows precisely what's going on in there because no one from the media has ever gotten in. And if there's no videos, that best you can do is hang around town and maybe talk to employees off the clock. Uh, talk about enforcing standards. How do you enforce the standards in a factory that no one can get into? It's like slavery. Uh, this is where they live in dormitories, varying uh, numbers of them. Uh, they work minimum 12 hours. Minimum of 12 hours. They, I heard this over and over. Ages 13 to 14, please hold your questions. Uh, Till at minimum, I mean, they have people do 43 hour shifts and 34 hours, things like that. Mm -hmm. They have another installation, 120,000 employees, uh, as many as 14 years old. Uh, uh, and see, Apple and the guys say, well, it's not, it's not us who are mistreating, it's it's these factories have the sole responsibility for the abuses, you know. And they put them all in t-shirts. Oh. You know, my employer usually you know, gave me one of these corporate t-shirts, and they wanted me to pose for it. I threw the damn thing out. I said, oh, I got to order. Come on. Oh, yeah, they will. Here's, a, here's a, the factory. Here's the suicide nets that they put up to keep people from jumping off out of the... Dormitories, you know, they have you, they have them sealed up there. Um, the, they eat very quickly, they do pay for their meals, but they try to get, they take naps as best they can. Uh, they have to line up with some other things, working conditions. Uh, just quickly, to think that electronics, is, is mostly machine made, not handmade. It, you couldn't be more wrong. Uh, here's a laptop factory, the 5,000 employees. After the laptops come in, then the boards are brought downstairs to the assembly order. And here's a different scene. Uh, and it's regular assembly line work. Um, it, the laptops and all electronics is sold on primarily by hand. Uh, due to the high cost of automation. It is not an automated thing. Some other things about working conditions, working work weeks, 13 hour to 15 hour days common, <coughs> one day off. They have peak seasons, no time off, often 16 to 19 hours. Get about 41 cents an hour. Now in order to do that, you gotta do 80, 8,920 toy pieces a day. One every 3.23 seconds. Oh. And if you didn't do it, you got your wages reduced. Yep. 18 fines. If you're late, 18 cents, and it's not like that. It's the only way you're made it, 40 cents. Oh. And if you were <coughs> no, egregiously late, you got a full day. 
make yeah, 18 that's cents an hour. hour. Yeah. 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 An hour. Yeah. yeah. All right. There's this is what they gave is. up in China. At one time they had dreams. This Mike Flores is always yelling at me because he doesn't like this artwork, and I do. I think these people have a prosperous, positive notion of the future. This girl, even in the factory no, here, those are paintings, not uh, you know, well, what difference does it make? What difference does it make if they're cartoons? We're talking about the artwork. These are people. There's a look at the chairman. They had the uh, yeah. They, there he is, leading oh, yes. him towards the future, yeah. So where do they go? Where do they end up? That factory we just saw? Is yep. that going down here? Look at the marching. The worker's paradise. All right. I'm not going to dwell on this a lot because I gave a whole evening on child labor itself. It's a topic I really don't care for, but it certainly must be dealt with, at least in some fashion. Maybe, um, yes. If you can see here, children were sold even by their own families. Is, there's a very good three, three documentaries on YouTube put together by the British Labor Educators. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, on, very good, very easy to watch. You can locate a child labor in Britain. Uh, the were called uh, Parish Apprentices. And in the 19th century industrialized England, for example, when it began, it was not considered in any way appropriate or anything. It was totally appropriate. Uh, members of parliament, the speeches, they all oh, they have children hired. They thought it was totally appropriate. Okay, this is from the American, the National Archives of Child Labor in the U.S. And there you go, like, could I have more, sir? <laughs> you know, and here we got the same thing going on today in China. <laughs> you can see here, this is uh, from the U.S. here, uh, factories, this is Lowell, Massachusetts. No, I think, I think this is, yeah. Uh, you can see they were actually, it was not, it was not hidden, it was, it was accepted. Uh, you know, one is. Situation, and particularly in India, uh, the incident of it, perhaps not relevant to Christmas. Just briefly, of the countries of the world, you can see uh, there's things in the coke industry, but uh, if you're buying chocolate, things of that nature. Uh, all right. Oh, I just wanted to throw this in there. You may or may not be aware of this. This was the guy who was inserting notes. He actually was making Halloween decorations, but he was saying, please help me. I'm trapped in this labor camp. <laughs> and he was inserting them in, in, in packages that he was making, products he was making. Uh, it caused quite a story. Yeah, you see, you can see, because I work 15 hours a day, Saturday, Sunday, you know. But he was putting it like, like a message in a bottle. All right, now we'll get, we're going to look at, I know we won't be too long at this, and then we can get to some good arguments. Uh, retail selling used to be, you know, out of the country, I used to go to places like this. <laughs> uh, you know, began as the country store. Uh, there was one in a recreated village, a little neater. Uh, there's never been a general store this neat. Um, and you can see there was a natural progression in the retailing industry until you get a bit more of the department store uh, range of goods. Um, okay, who are the big players? This is the number of stores. You can see Amazon is in ninth, ninth level here. Uh, McDonald's way up there. <coughs> but those are the uh, at least what we think the Costco, the Walmart. Okay. Let's see, just read quickly. Andy was talking about this. Medium pay of retail workers, uh, 21 grand, 10 bucks an hour on average, medium pay, about 5 million jobs. Uh, anyhow, and about one in three work part time. But you also get this stuff going on. That's, have to deal with that. Uh, a lot of argument this year in particular 
regarding they started Black Friday on Thanksgiving. Uh, just the fact here that the United States uh, is the only country, uh, developed country, that doesn't get paid holidays. 25% uh, of private sector employees don't get them, and 45% of service sector employees do not. Uh, well, I like Walmart's chief of marketing regarding working on Thanksgiving. He said, oh, the employees are really excited to work that day. I can't get excited. Boy, come out there. These guys. Uh, wage theft, if you're here. Uh, Kim Bobo wrote the book here in Chicago. Uh, that it, it's, I guess you can look over some of the figures there. Uh, as for recovering money, you're likely to get fired if you ask of seeing any of the money that's stolen from you. I know this about retailing. They say the store closes at 9 o'clock. What time do those workers go home? Wait a moment. Like if they get out of there at midnight. Oh. Mid 11, midnight. Wow. Always. Okay, types of retaliation. Uh, cut and pay, threatened fire, suspensions. You know, you better be good. You want to work here. I don't want any to look, you know. Okay, and the other thing you hear about workers, that not only are we getting cheated, we're working longer hours than anybody than in other countries. This is our reward. Yep. Uh, weekend work in particular and night work. Um, Okay, and what it, and there's been some action, of course, to fight back. Uh, you can see, look at troublemakers like this guy, <coughs> shoveling up in front of Walmart. Uh, of course, we had Black Friday protests again, about 10 locations in Chicago. I put the email out about it. Anyhow, I don't know if I want to get into all these facts and figures here. Uh, you probably know this, they only make about 17000 even if you're a manager, 42000 881 an hour. Uh, it's really uh, flexible schedules, you know. All right, we can cover that. Now here's a quickly, if you want, you can compare it with Costco. They don't have to do that. They don't have to be that nefarious. Even in health insurance, you can see uh, you, have to, you get in health insurance enrollment in six months instead of two years, Walmart. Um, and they start at 10 bucks an hour, go up. So, I mean, you can do pretty good business. You saw Costco's on the list there. I just thought I'd get a little bit into some of the fast food because we're going to talk about minimum wage. I don't know if I want to get into Starbucks too much, but they were supposed to be, I was curious because they were pretending to be the great, the, oh, we're really nice and, you know, all this, this kind of stuff here. And they are in some respect. There's one thing I know about this is that Starbucks determined, I'm not looking at all this, they determined that it cost them about two to three thousand dollars to train an employee. So they figured they would give them how much in benefits? Two to three thousand, maybe. So it's a trade-off here. And they did have the college thing. Oh, I like this here. You get one free pound of coffee a week. Right. <laughs> hey, thank you, boss. Thank you. All right, the mother thing, I don't know if you need their schedules. Of course, there was a woman who died recently. She was going, I think, to three, she had three jobs at three different locations. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't know when you're going to work at this joint, you know. So I don't know about everything up there. Actually, I went to look at 7-Eleven, and they said, oh, you can get health insurance, but it doesn't give me any information. <laughs> And I go, I looked all over and I go, it just says you can get out of this, but, and we're going to get to the health insurance, that's right for you. But what is it? Come on. They wouldn't say. What can we do? Uh, try to buy, if you're going to buy things, fair trade, uh, justice clothing, outlet stores, 
not outlets, but stores. Uh, there's also a iPhone, you can get the um, barcode scanners that you can take with you. Okay, uh, now we get a little bit into minimum wage. Uh, I can spend a lot of time on this, but two to three million people are paid less. Of course, a lot of people are classified as independent contractors, which is a lot of elite to circumvent the labor laws. And it's estimated that companies annually steal about $19 billion. And now if you look on here, this map, if you can see, it only begins at C. No one got an A or a B rating. Must be graded straight. So, you know, the black is zero. So no state is doing much about this. Uh, Raise Illinois, uh, the bottom 20% of Americans earn less than 10 bucks an hour. They fill uh, in income, and they're not teens. Everyone I think knows this. They ain't teenagers. They're 35 years or older, and 20%, 27% have children. These are not kids. This is not some like transition job. Look at this, elves. Look at that. Terrible. <coughs> you gotta think it's kind of cool that I came up in an elf of fifteen dollars, right? That's pretty cool, I like. Anyhow, I've been to some of these marches. I have one of these signs in my union office. Fight for 15. There's sporadic actions here at near Wendy's, uh, one place. Uh, the average fast food worker is 28 years old. They're the main income earners for their family. 65% are women, 20% six. Oh, here's a girl who tried to organize a fast food place. This is what happens when you talk about retaliation. Uh, she was sent home from work for not placing the pickles correctly. That's very important. Yeah, it is. That's You're right. Yeah. You got to have some standards, you know. This is not anything goes kind of. Oh, I love that. These are great. And you know about Nick Resources? They were giving advice to their employees. These emails are floating around the labor community. I just was laughing, my I couldn't believe these. They had all sorts of ideas on how to how to live on McDonald's pay scale. And like this one, they said, you know, if you feel stress or anything, you know, it shouldn't don't be a complainer if you're just a complainer. They also told them to take at least two vacations a year. How <laughs> Where? <laughs> and they call return your holiday gifts. <laughs> okay, you can see there's some figures here on minimum wage. We got to oh, I got to move on. I don't know if you want to look through all that. Congress has done nothing on minimum wage. None of the states. Nobody's doing anything about it. Um, the wage should be twenty-one seventy-two an hour. Uh, okay. Oh, this guy, I love him, libertarian type guy. Uh, he says that state laws, like this minimum wage, are a little, and this is all about freedom. Uh, you know, a lot of people want to work seven days a week. Everybody knows that. I'm intruding on my right to work seven days a week. Uh, the mothers are organizing, moms, MO, mothers for this and that. Uh, issues particular to that. These are international organizations. We're almost done, boys and girls. Uh, Verite is the one I found to be the best. These are the guys who come up with standards, try to do investigations. Uh, so, yeah, and ILO has been around for years. Uh, these guys have been kicking around the Buy Nothing Day. They do zombie. I haven't seen them in a while. The zombie walk in the store, or uh, the World Mart. Uh, this guy's floating around again. Reverend Billy 
He's just an actor, a theatrical guy out of New York, but he's got some interesting things against commercial. He had exorcism, the sh shop, sh I can't even say it. All right, one of the things, the alternatives uh, is a sharing economy in which your alternative uh, approach in which you share things instead of well, you rent your vehicle out. Uh, this ownership is the new norm. Here you can see it's the various websites uh, in which you can get in touch with people and rent various things. Let's say you need a pickup truck for the Printers Row Book Fair. You could rent one there. Things of that nature. Bike. Uh, okay. I uh, just wanted to bring this up. I had this book with me. Recommend if you're looking for a simplicity. Uh, Sue spoke here at the college. I keep in touch with her. Here's her book. Gives a bunch of ideas on uh, simplicity. And as she said, it's not about frugality. It's about living an authentic life. This materialism doesn't give meaning to our lives. A life that is rooted not in the stuff you own, but in your relationships with family and friends. Uh, all right. I wanted to bring this in many years ago, and this is concluding it. The union, now you got to do one way to get help these people. They got to have a union. If that hasn't given you the 99 reasons why you need a union, I don't know what will. I put this together many, many years ago, free computer and all this manually. But Christmas was coming and Santa was swamped with orders. And he told all the elves, you better get off your green, green ass and get to work. <laughs> And the elves all joined the union. He said, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, I'll show you around the North Pole. <laughs> yeah, feisty old guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, they walked out on him. Don't toy with ourselves, man. <laughs> oh, you know, but anyhow, Santa then agreed to sit down. They discussed working conditions. They had a contract to sign, and everybody had a good name. Huh. And there you go. Happy holidays. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get to turn off my question. What question? Okay, great. Oh, what's the moderator here? I want to say, Teddy. Teddy, Chaprenti. Teddy, Chaprenti. Teddy, Chaprenti. Oh, what's the one of time? Yeah. YouTube. It's actually about oh, child labor in Britain. Okay, Bill, what's your Yeah. Do you have any idea of what marginal economics is? Do you have any idea of the difference between proletarian and the lump of proletarian? Can't you stop that? What is it? Yeah, I can't. Well, you, you know or don't you? First time I No, no, no. I, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I well, never know. I never will know. All yeah, right. You will. Yeah, you rebuttal, you can tell us. All right. Who's next? All right. Karina. Uh, you're talking about the condition of American workers. What's your position on immigration? Is that going to help or hinder uh, the fight for minimum wage? It is not against the law. They say they're breaking the law. And I wear buttons that say no one is illegal on my other hat. Um, it's not against any law to want to provide for your own. Uh, and no, in the House of Labor, all are welcome. And we're not we're not going to point figures and say you have certain characteristics or whatever or credentials, and therefore you are over here and you're not one of us. No, that's antithetical to my way of thinking. Okay, Carl All are welcome. Don. And they, they just want to provide for their own. It's a stupid system that's created the need for immigration. That's the, that's the guilty guys. And you're going to arrest them for what? Wanting to get a job? Come on. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't get scabs too. 
Okay. They put themselves, a scam puts himself above the community. His own personal self interest, well, 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 self focus, I am more important over here. than the rest of you One combined. Time. That's not ethically anybody I will shake hands with. That's ridiculous. All right. Let's go on. Come on. Is that all you got? That's right. That's You've right. got to shut it up or he'll go on forever. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, what's going to happen to uh, Santa's workshop when once uh, global warming takes oh. effect? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's in Asia now. It actually, um, so I, that certainly leads me, and not directly. All of the people in China are threatened with relocation, just like here. They use the same argument in Bangladesh, Vietnam. If you, if you guys want this, you to make these demands, we're going to move. And we're going to move here or there or wherever. And they use the same thing. So the shop is always moving. That's why the guy said, why don't you put a factory on a ship and therefore you could just sail it to the poorest country on earth. You know, why not be done with it? But they face that same thing. I just wanted that. I'll get you in a... Uh, Hewlett Packard is one of the few places they actually are claiming now that they are moving their factories and hiring people from the local communities as opposed to like these kids that can never get home or maybe once a year. Because people can actually, this is amazing, they think it's so great and a concession on their part that you actually can go to work to a factory and go home at night. Don Richie. Okay. Uh, Charlie, are you going to go up to the North Pole and organize the elves? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they need it, if it's Santa needs it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I've never, I, I'm not too good at organizing. I do oh. more the legal stuff and the other guys go out to the or I okay. never get to do the organize. I'm like Cinderella of my union. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I end up ending the arbitrations and the, after they're organized, actually, after they're organized, then I have to show up on the first day of, and those have always been intriguing experiences. Oh, okay. <laughs> you are, all right. Yeah, I, yes, I just want to make a point, you know, back in the 1990s, that's all right. Well, you know, the, the question is this, you know, I guess, to put it in a question form. Uh -huh. What is the emphasis, you know, where should that really be? Should it be on the psychology, the attitudes of the people who run these corporations? Because they don't differentiate anymore between Chinese people, Indian people, and Americans. And as far as they are concerned, unlike we used to have back in the 50s and 60s, uh, they would like to bring what they do over in China with the ice slaves right here to the United States. They really have a certain kind of attitude problem that uh, is, to me, the heart of it. I wonder what your thoughts were. I, I, I don't know. I... Dealing, you, what do you, how, how do you deal with a guy like that Jeff Bezos? How do you, I, I, where do you they begin? Be where do you begin? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what commonality is there? This is, this is like, you know, he, he plugs in his employees and... But, but, you know, he's no different than anybody in this room. No, you know, I am not like him. <laughs> I am not nuts. I'm not evil. I'm not inherently evil. I don't think that the profit is the most important thing on earth. I think, like Costco, you can, in fact, that's not the purpose of a corporation, is to exploit people. The bottom line is not to make me rich. Not for employees. You don't hire people. I don't think you should be allowed to hire people. As regular, we don't allow anybody to do it, and that's that's not should not be allowed. It's a very serious matter, and we allow anybody to do it. In that cases, mm -hmm. evil people, psychopaths. Yeah. Uh, Russell, I, I thought the standard of living was rising in China. Uh, there's a growing middle oh, class. Oh, well, that's right. Um, you know, Marx made a point that, that, that capitalism is doomed because. Um, Capitalists want to reduce, you know, re 
reduce wages, and workers can't buy the goods that the factories turn out to. Have this, uh, None of those people can purchase the products they make. Is that right? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, they actually, there was one outside of one of those factories, the news, they're doing a, a, a documentary. The people didn't, had never seen an iPad. <laughs> and they didn't know they were made there. They had no idea. They don't have iPhones themselves. It costs two to two and a half months wages to buy one. You know, the thing about the income, and I don't know the Democrat rising thing. One of the figures that stuck in my mind, and you can talk around these figures all you want. What is an iPhone? 600 bananas? 600 bucks? The actual money that goes back to China is $6.34 per iPhone. Now, if that's raising their standard of living, I don't know where they began. That's not much. That, out of $600 that you buy for, was that a five now or six? They get $6.34. I couldn't believe that figure. That's all, it, that's all Apple pays. So how much are they getting level? You saw 450,000 people. What are they making? <laughs> all right. Johnson. I thought China was one of your socialist workers' paradise. Well, I saw you that they, they've not honored the, the message. They swayed. Yes, I mean, their policy, you know, I'm not going to summarize that as a whole other lecture. Oh, we don't care what pulled the cat is as long as it gets you the most. Things like this. Okay, you let them in. You let these Taiwanese guys in there. And look what they're doing to your country. Somebody's got to, either the people are going to step up again. There, there's another thing. I, I didn't finish. I just came across the book. The, the, the revolutions in China. I just started this. And there's going to be another one. I don't think they're going to put up with this. This is not, this is not a positive life. There's no future in this assembly line stuff. You may and say, you can kill you know, a couple more million people. Hey, one fool at a time, y'all. Well, I don't know about the they're sure. killing people. Uh, what do you think the happens in these factories? Do you, what do you think is going on in these factories? Did you, did you, were you out of the room? <laughs> didn't you see the part on plastics? You didn't see that, right? So we better do it again. Let's do it again. Because <laughs> he must missed it. What do you think they're got killing? They're killing him now. Mom made Hitler look like a piker. Now, oh, you know, Mom. All right, yada. Charlie, then it's like slavery in China, uh, like for some workers, because it's like dormitory and it's like whole complex of where they stay. You know, it's like slavery for them. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll put you in that chair for the next 19 hours and you can do some work for me. No, I don't <laughs> and you can do it for the next seven days. And, and if you give me any trouble, I'm going to take some of your money. Because I ain't going to give you much to begin with. But it's not, now what do you define as slavery? You I mean, like, is the only thing as slavery? No, listen, you know what I saw? I saw a It's freedom, channel, oh, that's freedom. On Channel C, that's right. no, freedom. Channel C. It's freedom. You saw that this time. No. Are you asking me a question or not? I'm, I'm, the, I'm the speaker. So, what do you think? It's slavery for them? Well, what do you think? This is something. This is <laughs> Come on. Come on, answer the question. Oh, this not all right. All right. It is slavery. All right, I answered it. It's plain, simple, beginning, then point A to point B, slavery. They're taking young people, children, putting them to work. They don't care. They don't care what happens to them. They don't care if they live, die. If you don't make me money, you have no value to me. So, so this is in China. All right. Okay. All right. China in, in, in Let's North go. Korea. You had your Why question. Wait, Korea. No, you're on. <laughs> North Korea too? China. Come on, bro. Likely. Charlie, how come, um, you know, this minimum wage thing goes, goes to the boiling point every five or ten years in this country? Why hasn't it ever been indexed to the CPI or... Some kind of index. Well, over here. <laughs> in the US. we didn't spend a lot of time on it. There's not been a lot of legislative action. Uh, getting, getting, you, it's a broader topic. 
and I've dealt with this, and, and <coughs> you do not get solutions to labor situations through legislative assemblies. That's the answer. Historically, I dealt with this for many, many years, and I do lobby, but do not think that you're going to achieve any any measurable positive conditions of employment through a legislative assembly. It has never worked. Once in a great while, something shows up. The entire legislation for labor law is only a list of about eight laws. It was only until 1970 that we had occupational safety and health. I, what the reasons are for that, you know, but legislation, unions wouldn't exist if the legislatures were doing. So there's got to be a big, this is, this is a shame that the minimum wage is $8. So we got to have a big protest and shut down businesses and Thank you, my turmoil well, just, to, just to get normal wages in this country. If you, if you, I listened to the entire Republican convention, is that uh, the business community are job creators right. and they should not be regulated right. and they should not be uh, told how much they should pay right. and then they come up with absolute fiction that if you raise the minimum wage, and this one I do not understand, you will somehow create inflation, but if you don't, they want to fix wages, but they don't want to fix the prices of goods. So your wages stay stagnant, the prices of goods go up, and the libertarians at least are telling us that you all don't create inflation, but the poor person making minimum wage or less ends up paying, they get poorer and poorer and poorer. <laughs> and there are actually people who are advancing this, and there's, a lot of people that think job creators are invincible and That's good right. and be nice to them. And they, they are, well, they are and they're not slave people. That's they're right. not slave drivers. All yeah. right, Raj, Raj, Raj Patel. Patel. Yeah, they're not That's slave right. drivers. All right, Raj Patel. They're like they're like Mother Teresa. Hey, uh, Raj hey, Patel me. has a question. You give a very nice speech, okay? Uh, I mean, it was the greatest. Okay. Now, is the system is bad or people are bad? And do you have any solution that can lead to paradise? Collective bargaining. Come on, we've been there. No, no, no. You, the workers, the workers collectively. You can operate a capitalist system if you're. I ultimately get rid of capitalism, root and branch. But if you want to have it, you're going to have to have designated representatives of the employees who are equal to the highest <laughs> management official or in any meeting or in any room and some third party to enforce uh, yeah yeah and labor laws like you say not phony ones and not ones that can you, or, can you organize people workers can, can we organize, organize workers? okay we are not able to organize people do not want to join the union Young people do not want to Yeah, yeah I realize that. They're yeah. scared. So, so what are you going to do? They're scared. Well, they Roll up their sleeves. They don't want their father's It's not them. easy. There are people who are scared. <laughs> yeah. Walmart people are, are, tim are afraid. They're intimidated. You're darn right. The, 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 the capitalist fascists are, are not rolling over. Believe you me. I can tell you all kinds of stories. Yes, you try to organize the union, and what do they do? They retaliate. They get rid of them. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy, but that's really? the, yeah. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give up. Okay. I said, well, oh, I give up. I give up. Well, desist for a second, and you'll get a question from Sid Cohen. Well, um, <laughs> as far as unions are concerned. They don't have a union, but they're out there striking right now. <laughs> who, well, what there? do you think they're doing? Look at the television. Who's, who's they're, they're striking, uh, going out on strike uh, during the Christmas season. A question. And if you see white people <laughs> and black people organizing together, if that isn't 
If that isn't the beginning of a union, I don't know what is. Okay. Uh, Gene Hawker. Uh, I, I couldn't read that one uh, uh, screen you had. I, I, you mentioned Costco as a pretty good employer. I've heard of Mondragon in, uh, in Spain. Could you name two or three really good companies that have a good relationship with their workers? Just actually the retailers? Or any any major employer in the United States. What about Volkswagen? Yeah, there there are people that have decent contracts. Um, yeah, for years Sears was never a problem. Uh, Sears was one of the nicest. That's what I mean. It's uh, notorious, a good place to work. Um, you know, it varies. I. Um, I'm trying to think of sources. I have to think there are places to look up and things like. Well, that's what I mean. They have scanners and stuff like this, you know. Um, shopping guys. Right. Thank you. Uh, Don Ritchie. Oh. Okay. All right. Can you name a country, either from uh, from the past or the present, where? Workers have been treated fairly, in, in your view, and and, uh, and sure. And you, okay. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, let Charlie answer. France is probably uh, way up there. France uh, today? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Germany is Spain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. okay. There's a uh, Mexico. Matter of fact, one of the one of the, one of the better ones that on paper is Mexico. Then it, it, uh, yeah, it certainly, I had that fact, up in Canada. Go right up to Canada. I don't have to go very far. Okay. I'd, I'd love to be a union organizer in Ontario. Yeah. I didn't study. Boy, that's. Oh, okay, oh, now if, if Mexico, if, if things are, if, look, if, if things are so good for workers in Mexico, then how come how come so many are coming here to the United States? No, no. On paper, on paper, I said. Oh. Now they have authentic <laughs> unions, the company unions. But on paper, the labor laws of Mexico are very superior to the U.S. Ah, but it doesn't, it kind of gets Like anything. It, it, so it's kind of No one breach. was enforcing the labor laws. Oh, you okay. Even here, you want to hear this? During the Bush administration, mm -hmm. no one was enforcing the labor laws, at least mm -hmm. at the federal level. <coughs> Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Zero. We would bring up cases. Guess where they went? They actually got angry with me because I kept filing charges against employers. And they said, you know, we're not processing these. They actually went to my union. And I said, that's just too damn bad. And I kept doing it. I said, these are valid and someday they're going to, yeah, and they did get here. But I, until we got rid of the Republicans, there was nobody there. There was no, there was no judges. Right, you wouldn't appoint judges. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever heard the old Latin saying, "Egustibus non disputatum est"? I can't remember. Do you know have any idea about that? That's about all I've heard tonight. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, you, you I am <laughs> sorry. I truly am. Give me three bucks. <laughs> Go back to Rome. Yes. Go back to Rome. Go back to Rome. Your yeah, life is cruel. Go back to Rome. Juliana has the next question. Okay, Charlie, I'm in China, in North Korea, do you know they're working on contract, by contract, by yearly? Those poor people who are working for so many hours, they have contract? No. No, they don't have contract? Well, they call it daily contracts. They're day laborers. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they call it. No, they don't give a And anybody who wants to work by contract. You hungry for dessert? Hire me. Hire an employee. That's just a, that's just a way to avoid uh, uh, hiring uh, compliance with labor law. Well, yes. Nobody wants a contract. Howard I'll show you. Okay. Yes, sir, Howard. How you doing? What is you the structure like of the employer okay, above the worker? 
Is the uh, employer getting a share of the profits? Does he get a salary and the, and the profits go to uh, the uh, state? How does it work above the, in other words, who is the, has the interest in the exploitation? Is that the employer or the state? How, it's Where? A, it, it's I, in I China. Don't, I, I don't fully do corporations. Like, is it, is it like a corporation in the United States? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I honestly don't know it's off the, the economic structure of the corporate world of, of China, honestly. I presume their profit-making operations, you know, with the concurrence of the government, uh, do we think that you have an answer on that? No. Oh, all right. And then I'll go to Karina and recognize you next, okay? Um, do you believe that uh, labor will be leaving China and going to Africa, as some people have predicted? It's already started. It's already started, yeah. Yes. Is yes. There, do you think labor has anything set in place to organize Africa? Or, I know Africa's an enormous place, but... Any country in Africa? Yes. Yeah. They, I, I think I think they're, they're moving. I think the movement still is to Vietnam. You saw the figure there. Vietnam was the biggest bubble of growth the past ten years. So they're going to Southeast Asia. They don't even have to leave the country. They can just move to another part of the country. Um, that, that happens in the United States. You don't really have to leave. You can just move to another state. You can go to, you know, like go to a state like where Don is from, Tennessee, you know. And, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah go to, yeah. <laughs> Scab State, like Tennessee, hey, yeah. Hey, where are you from, that Scab listen, State? They recognize yeah, correctly yeah, that you can't start yeah, the work of the devil. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Seriously, I, 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 you know, is. The organized labor huh? movement is, yeah. It, Thanks. Oh, the workers reject it. Yeah. They reject organized labor. I, I don't, I'm not really in an international economics, so I don't know. I really haven't seen too much evidence of moving to Africa. How would, how would, all right, Charlie. Yeah, the Thorian guy. All right, Charlie, I want to get your honest opinion out this. Would the Grinch make a good union organizer? Yeah, yeah. He is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have French laws. <laughs> All right. I'll make I'll make arrows out of any kind of wood. <laughs> we think you are. As long as his heads and hearts in the right place. <laughs> I just wonder. Uh, uh, most of the wipe <coughs> down. Good union uh, organizations are mostly in the developed countries, like Europe, the U.S., Canada. Uh, how about Japan? You know Japan has good union there. No, I'm sorry, I do not. Okay. Mostly, mostly their local union, not industrial union in Japan. Yeah, uh, Mike Lee. Charlie, let's start making money off these Chinese and raise these duties and tariffs and stuff. All these boats coming over and containers. Uh, and these containers. I took the slide out. Slapping some the, the, dollar bucks on that. They're, they're, the slide I took out of the program actually was uh, <laughs> Obama putting tariffs on solar stuff. Everything. And that's all I know. Yeah, I but mean, yeah. avoid OSHA, avoid pollution controls, avoid unions, avoid everything and do it on the cheap. Let's start slapping some... some but, yeah, on. that's what I read. They're, they're getting ahead of the game on smaller things. Yeah. All right, let's see. What time do we have here? We got it's 8.07. What? 8.07. Oh, Well, uh... How many people here have questions? Uh, Rebuttals. Uh, I have rebuttals. No. Uh, remarks. Uh, one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. Our speaker who gets the final rebuttal.
about that. Uh, I think what, what ought to discredit our speaker tonight, I see he's going out of the room. He, oh, all right, I'll sit. <laughs> 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 you profess ignorance of a number of things about it, three times that I can think of. I, I, I take the position that you have to know things. You can't just holler like a big ball baby or a spoiled brat or something, like little nestlings with their mouths wide open for their parents' grubs. You have to treat it, the social mechanism like an engineer or a mechanic treats a machine. It's not a matter of wish fulfillment. It's a matter of setting up a mutually rewarding exchange network. You can't, you can't. Frederick Bastiat wrote a little paragraph about 150 some years ago that uh, even Daniel Defoe could not imagine Robinson Crusoe cast up on the island without certain products of society. He said, that proves that society is man's natural milieu. Man cannot live by himself as an individual, like most animals can, can't live off the land. Like just about any kind of animal can. What the human race has to do is set up mutually beneficial exchange networks. I didn't hear a thing about that tonight. All I heard was a bunch of bobbing. This could have been a maternity ward. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, I don't think anybody likes the idea of the commercialization of Christmas. I do. Uh, I'm not a Christian, but I can understand the holiday very, very well. Uh, a lot has been said tonight about, uh, you know, how terrible uh, this commercialization thing is, but, but they, they haven't offered any solutions. But I can tell you a way to work against that sort of thing. If you go back 150 years ago, uh, Uncle Joe, who was a policeman, maybe he had a, a hobby doing hand-tooled leather, and he, he did belts and wallets and things like that. Uh, Aunt Martha made preserves and uh, Grandma made pies. And at Christmas time, Grandma gave you a pie or two. And Aunt Martha gave you preserves. And, uh, and Uncle Joe, the policeman, gave you a belt that maybe said to my nephew Harold from Uncle Joe. And these were heartfelt gifts that people got that they treasured. So if you, it, coming back to today, when an executive hands his secretary $1,100 or $1,500 and a list and says, this is my family and their names and their sizes, go out and buy these whatever you think they should have because I don't have time for this. 
that is not a gift that is appreciated. But I can tell you that when you give a gift that you yourself have made, then it's much more appreciated. And not only is it more appreciated, but you will be much more loved by those recipients of those gifts. So that the way to work against the big commercialization of Christmas is simply to find a way to make your own gifts and give them to those you love and avoid going to a place like Kmart's or Walmart's or whatever and buying mass-produced crap yeah. and or as some people here would say plastic shit. <laughs> uh, uh, instead of doing that, give things that you yourself made. There are, if you look in the back of any uh, magazine, there are usually columns that tell you that uh, you can become an engraver or you can become uh, this or that, learn to do this as a hobby or that as a hobby. And then from that base, you can make all your gifts and give them to somebody. And, and it's not about the money, although you probably would come out spending much less, but it's about doing something that has a genuine spirit in it. That, that people will love seconds. you for. And this is the way to work against this kind of thing. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. I think um, people really don't understand thank you. Thank what's you. happening in China. Actually, the factories that people working in China belong to American capitalists or, or British capitalists or French capitalists, whatever have you. But they have to leave behind 51% of the profit that goes to China. And there's been a lot of remarkable things happening in China. They brought about a third of their people out of poverty that live in the big cities. And now they're buying more goods. And they're becoming a very independent country. And it's tending towards socialism. Now there's other things involved that they were talking about. One thing is the workers in the United States. If you watch television, you see these marches. And you see these demonstrations in front of these uh, places like Walmart, uh, Target, and places like that. And one thing that has never happened before, if you notice it, it's white and black together. Oh, unheard of. And this makes a qualitative difference. They're starting to organize, and they won't fall for the BS that Rob Emanuel is telling them that they'll get maybe $12 an hour in three or four, or four years, which is ridiculous. They're asking for $15 an hour now, and for that to increase with the rate of inflation. Now this is, like I said, a qualitative change, and a change for the better. And I think we're living in a pre-revolutionary period. People are starting to question the capitalist system itself. Like you look at, the, at Seattle, they've elected a socialist mayor. Oh, man was putting in $15 an hour right away. So this is, this is progress. And the United States is not winning the war against people around the world, like people think. If you look at Latin America, if you look at Bolivia, look at Argentina, look at Brazil, look at uh, Peru, and all these various countries, they, they're starting to organize and they got their own particular form of government. It's a hybrid government tending towards socialism. So there's been a lot of progress, but people don't read enough from the left side of the issues. 
get yourself a socialist magazine. You can get monthly review. You can pick it up. There's a bookstore over on um, Main and Chicago Avenue in Evanston. You can pick it up there and start reading that. And you get some idea of the progress that's being made. Socialism! Charlie, I much appreciate your comments about the, quote, illegal aliens. Uh, our, one of our organizers at Jane Adams Senior Caucus is married to a guy who was an undocumented alien. I think, uh, right, we ought to let anybody in. I hate, uh, I've changed my position on that over the years. I think we ought to let anybody in. We let their money in. We let their goods in, but we don't want to let the people in. There's something wrong with that. Uh, when, uh, we talked about wages, we talked about unions, and in my opinion, from my point of view, uh, one of the answers to that, those two problems we, we got in this country is community organizing. Uh, in community organizing groups like North uh, one North Side and Jane Adams Senior Caucus. Uh, I've been out fighting for Fight 15. On the personal uh, level of Jane Adams Senior Caucus, we decided in the Finance Committee last summer we're going to pay nobody less than 15 bucks an hour. We're putting our money where our, yeah. our uh, beliefs are, our values are. So. Uh, the unions are so weak in this country, and my one of the little problems they had was these guys in pinstripe shoot, uh, suits decided they were the same as these CEOs, and they acted like that. But it's uh, if you really want to work for people at the bottom, people who need unions, people who need more pay, get into some community organizing group like Jane Adams Senior Caucus, one North Side, Ray's Illinois, all of these things uh, I've been in, and I don't feel lonely. I see some people from this audience in there too. So thank you. Raj Patel. My name is Raj Patel, and I like holidays. When I came on a campus, I told the university. Anybody want to invite me for Christmas or Thanksgiving or Easter? I'm available. <laughs> and they always did that for me. And I had a good time. No complaints. Okay. The Charlie gave a good speech and very entertaining and, and I have a great deal of respect for him. But hey, train is gone. Forget about unions. It's not going to be there. We are in a technical technological revolution. And there, what you guys are talking about, touchy-feely good, is gone. We are, we are sitting behind our computer in our room, and we are not sacking up with a bunch of guys and horsing around in some place. You know, we are not doing that. And so for you to expect that kind of community, it's not going to happen. We, we got to have a new strategy, new scenario that how can you organize this society, how do we reproduce kids, how do people get married, how people get, get love, fall in love, okay, how people do work. All these things we have to, we have to think about freshly and forget about old ideas, okay. It's not going to work. It's, it's all right for some uneducated, some, some still behind guys. But hey, it's not going to be there tomorrow. And uh, and let me let me tell you this other thing. China, don't worry about it. Do you know what do you know what Chinese had fifty years back? God, they are they are ten times better. No no matter how hard work they have to do, they were nobody. They were making hundred, two hundred dollars a year. They were working on a farms with nothing and starving. They are doing very, very well. Okay? And let us see in America. We got to fix America. Do you know, do you know how a transient worker works, gets paid? How much? In two weeks they work, 
After taking out all their stain and everything, they get 40 or 50 dollars. How I know? I have worked there, edge there for two weeks. Okay, how much senior, people who take care of senior citizen? Okay, they get paid and they are always on a call. And do you know what happens? No social security, no official pay. Okay, now if you, now if you want to fix anything, you can imagine you want to fix it, what is, what is a big deal? You, you Democrat control government until like, you, can, you control city and ban their product. Do whatever you want to do. Why well, you don't have guts to do that? If you cannot do Amazon, you cannot do anything. I'm sorry. Okay? Don't give me a lecture about what is this and don't be feel goody goody. You cannot fix Amazon this absolutely ridiculous system, then you cannot fix anything. Don't pick on a retail alarm. Retailing, retailing is a trouble industry in this country. Over the last 20, 30 years, in, well, I am here in this country, our biggest, biggest companies had gone bust. You saw on the main street, there are empty stores. Okay? Our problem is too much rent everywhere. You, you are paying 25 to 30% of whatever you pay is on a rent, on a merchandise. It's so expensive. It's government regulation. Chicago wants or how you are, whatever, some, some estate, what do you call it, inventory tax or some tax, for people making 50, 60 thousand dollars in a sales. That's ridiculous. If I want to sell peanuts, it will cost me 4 thousand dollars to get started in Chicago. When I was a kid, I took on a paper mache, put up some peanut and go on a train station, it didn't cost me anything. Okay? We have a problem and we have to fix what is the problem. Stop dreaming. Stop about yesterday. Look tomorrow. You know, dream tomorrow. And dream change. Because that's where your life is. That's what your kids' life is. And that's what Ambedkar's life is. Thank you. Unions are dead! Unions are dead! Okay, uh, all right, uh, all right, this is a real, real uh, good presentation from Charlie, uh, a lot of fun. I, uh, Charlie mentioned Tennessee, my, uh, my, my former home state. I think what, for those of you who don't know, he was referring to the, um, to the Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga, where there was a vote on whether to, uh, whether to unionize or not, and, and, and the workers, the majority of workers voted not to be unionized in that plant, and um, and I, I think and so so that's what Charlie was referring to. Now I, I just want to say also, and you you mentioned this the the crazy idea that that higher you know that that some conservatives have put have put forward that you called crazy that that higher wages would. Um, would cause inflation. That's based on the theory of the wage price spiral. The idea that if wages go up, then then the producer will pass the cost along to the consumer with higher prices, and then supposedly that will create a demand for higher wages and so on. Uh, that actually that that theory actually does it doesn't uh, pan out in the real world because if you look at how things actually have been going in this country, wages have kind of stayed the same for most people. Well, the prices have continued to go up. Yeah. Now, um, now I just, I, I really liked your, your bit about Santa and the elves, Charlie, uh, but you left out one important part. What happened after Santa Claus uh, happily agreed, or apparently happily agreed, to the contract with the oh. elves. After he did that, you know, he was all smiles and everything, but after he did that, he, uh, he closed the North Pole factory and, uh, and, and moved all the operations to a contractor in China. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, and UPS helps see. him with logistics, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right, yep, yep, save a, save a bundle, you know? Okay, now, um, I, and on the subject of China, I just want to, you know, I, I, I heard some people actually, a couple of people were actually uh, praised China. I, I want to say that, in my opinion, the exploitation of workers is inevitable under communism. And, and, and it's because China is ruled by, the, the, by the, the Communist Party is why you have this terrible exploitation. Now, to, to those of you who are Marxists, that may sound nonsensical. But the thing is that communism, a communist state always, right, uh, is a dictatorship. 
And in a dictatorship, whatever kind of dictatorship it is, there's no accountability. The ruler can do whatever the hell he wants, and, and there's no way to legally change the government's policy. So there's no there's there's no there's there's nothing to stop the ruler from from exploiting the masses. Even even in a, and uh, that goes just as much for a communist dictatorship as it does for any other kind. Uh, now the argument that China is better off now than it was 50 years ago uh, is is completely. I, I heard a couple of people say that tonight, and it, it's completely absurd because it's it's like the, the whole even if the standard of living has gone up, it's like saying that well well if only half as many of the workers are 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 dying of, of workplace uh, re, uh, caused cancer as last year, then 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 you people should just shut the hell up and quit complaining about everything. No, I mean because any kind of any kind of injustice or exploitation or crime is wrong and should be stopped. Well, it doesn't matter. You know they, this whole argument that there, if there's less now than there was before, uh, and and therefore people should just shut up and quit complaining is ridiculous because the people in power will not change things un, unless the masses force them to it. Power, you know, Frederick Douglass said yeah. that power concedes nothing without a fight. It never has, and it never will. Capitalism cannot be reformed, in spite of uh, our videographers position that it may have some things wrong with it. It cannot be reformed, it has to be eliminated. Employers do not intimidate uh, their employees. My father was a mail carrier uh, throughout World War II, during the Depression and World War II. And when World War II began, the postal workers were making $2,000 a year. They continued to make $2,000 a year until 1962. In 1962, my father retired because the president of the union had threatened a strike. And the postal officials had told their workers that if you go on strike, that's treason and we will shoot you. <laughs> and he believed it. He believed it. Um, the minimum wage in Chicago will rise immediately or soon to $10. And then over the next... 5,000 years will rise to $13. There's an old Latin expression that fits in here. It's, it's uh, omnia vincit veritas, which translated means, fuck you, Ram. <laughs> That's your new bear! Come on! He's your new bear! He's getting back oh, in! Right. Let's get another <laughs> we are drowning in plastic shit. <laughs> any color, any kind, Keep the change. Thank you. in any form. Plastic shit is plastic shit. This society will be known in the future as the plastic shit period of humanity. There is nothing that is affecting life more than that. Uh, I, I I remember something. I, did, I think that very few of you have the opportunity to live in community with a little animal. <laughs> Living in community with an animal that trusts you, that loves you, that respects you. And that animal, in my case, was a little canary. Just a very light, like this pen, very light. And this animal uh, was very scared of people. And so I have the patient to gain his confidence by feeding him slowly and all that. And eventually, he stepped on my hand and, and eat food that I put in my palm of my hand. And then he sit in my head, in my shoulders. I walk around the house with the bird. And then I went to the garden, and the bird, you know, fly in the garden. And he went into the flowers, and then came back to me. Um, he, he was a, a citizen of this universe, a creature of this universe. <coughs> and he gave me his company and his trust. And I think that my lesson in my life was that I see very little of this uh, 
trust and, and love and care between us and other people and, and animals. And so this is now leading to a good point, in a good state. We are going to probably destroy everything that is of value in this earth. There are more species disappearing now, more rapidly than any time in the history of the earth. Uh, we do need to live in concert with life on this earth. We cannot live separated. About 30 years ago now, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists published a very well-researched report on what was happening to China. And what was happening to China was that Mao had declared the Kinkeno plan, which is 15-year plan, to raise the production, the productivity of China. What they did was a, a humongous disaster because in order to achieve the, the aim of Mao, they destroyed all the trees mm. that they were holding the land. Mm. So when the rains and the winds come, these lands now ended up in the river. Mm -hmm. And the rivers become flat <coughs> like a billiard table. And so every day the tides go up and down twice a day, like you know. And this tide went up five hundred miles up the river and down the river. In doing that, destroy all life on the river, destroying mm -hmm. the bird's nest, destroying the frogs, the thing, and left the barren land. And the bulletin of the atomic scientists says this is not going to work for China. And today, China went into building the biggest dam in the history of humankind, the Three Gorges Dam, who destroyed the Jiangxi River, making it a desert for life, changing the times of the water running down, changing the nutrients that go into the sea, destroying the fisheries that the river used to bring the nutrients, now it doesn't. And then the other major river in China is the Yellow River, and it's so poisonous mm -hmm. that nothing could live in there, or the river water couldn't right. be used for anything, for the industry or anything. So that uh, it's a communist system or a capitalist system. We have to live in this earth, and that's what we need to keep in mind. Governor Rounder's kind of spot for you. Let me. <laughs> uh, Good evening. Thank you, uh, uh, Chuck. Uh, give an uh, excellent uh, presentation. I, I learned a lot about the uh, Christmas. Uh, one thing I probably disagree with uh, Charlie's uh, union. Right now, I see union can only make minimum, very minor differences if you organize anything, because the world transportation is so easy, and uh, all the goods, unless it's a local, say, utility company, <coughs> unionized or something, then it won't, go, won't, it won't be able to go away. But anything else, uh, it will. Like uh, when I was uh, a kid uh, 40, 50 years ago, uh, I, I was born in China, in ta uh, Taiwan. At that time, Taiwan has a, a two big industry. And uh, it's, uh, one is uh, match boxes, because uh, the factory can produce all the matches, but in order to put the matches into box, you need labor. So there are uh, certain uh, villages, certain towns, uh, everybody, have their living room full of match boxes and the matches. They just stack the matches into the box and then deliver. Another big industry is uh, the Christmas light. At that time, there's no machine to assemble those, and then the assembly of Christmas light it becomes a, a big, big industry in Taiwan at that time. Probably because uh, at that time Taiwan the uh, the salary is uh, much lower than U.S., so uh, they started uh, outsourcing 
this kind of labor. And the, later, all the TVs, uh, we have a huge uh, TV manufacturing uh, plants, and uh, then uh, all owned by US uh, RCA or uh, G GE, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the thousands of uh, workers going there. But they are not, no, no, they, they all moved to China or some other country. Yes. Can I ask a very quick, I'm sorry, very quick question. Okay, I happen to just watch news, like uh, domestic news, and I just, you know, like push uh, remote control. And it was station like 369, like it was like world news, blah, blah, blah. And they showed China, right, China. And I have a question for you. Why, why those owners of this factory, because I know it's close to Russia maybe, uh, but ra in Russia it was not so brutal. Why those... Uh, managers and owners, or whoever they own, why are they they're so brutal to the people? Poor people, they, they so suffer in China. Okay. You know, like those workers, why? Okay, why did they sure. okay I'll, I'll answer your question. Uh, in really? China, because they used to be a, a authoritarian, uh, Mao dominated yeah. uh, Mao communist Zidon. country, Mao Zidon, yeah. If you try to complain anything, you will be killed, okay? In so, in, yeah, it, in China, it's a, a dictatorship, right? Yeah, so you, you have lived in a dictatorship country, right? No, but not yeah. like that, not like that. Uh, not, not too far different, okay? Maybe not directly uh, not get well. killed, but okay. something like that. Uh, right now, they, they still have that kind of uh, probably culture or something, so boss is boss. Okay. The employee is the employee, have to listen to boss. If you don't like it, you, 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 you get fired, that's uh, very kind that you can find some work uh, somewhere else. Okay. But uh, some, some, in some places, uh, they, they just... Uh, uh, give you a very hard time, uh, worse than being Thank you. Fired. Thank you so much. Okay. So, I think the, the union, there's one way to keep the union. If the whole world has a world law, say every company has to have union, then the union will be exist. Uh, other than that, the, the, the manufacturer plants just move around where there's no union. They go there. Okay. Uh, in China, actually, like I just said, the, the, the workers can move around, so they are not uh, like in dictatorship. Uh, if you ask the people, the Foxconn, the, the factory you just mentioned, they provide average salary is uh, probably 1.5 times average salary than uh, other companies. So they said, they pay very good salaries, although not very good to us, but uh, in China, those are very good. Okay, the last thing, uh, in terms of uh, what you can really do about that, like uh, apples or some companies, uh, closing companies, uh, yes, uh, those are very pitiful. Uh, uh, I guess uh, what we can do is to is close to expose uh, those companies, what they, where and how they produce their stuff, and the uh, people will have a choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm next, Andy. No, I'm next. Got Trump. Got Trump. You know, there is a difference between democratic socialism and that which was practiced by the uh, Bolsheviks uh, uh, under uh, Lenin and uh, Trotsky and uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, what we call the communists. Uh, they, the Bolsheviki, uh, decided uh, that the party had to lead the revolution. Not the workers, not uh, the workers' movement, not uh, a democratic uh, movement of including peasants and 
uh, workers and uh, all sorts of people uh, combined, but but uh, the party, uh, the advanced workers' party. Well, and it be, the leadership became narrower and narrower as they became um, more the government, uh, and uh, they uh, excommunicated uh, the people who were not uh, in uh, sympathy with the leadership of the party. Uh, is mm -hmm. called centralized democracy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which became very undemocratic, but it became a, an elitist ruled system of bureaucratic collectivism by the top managers. Uh, that's the kind of undemocratic elitist centralization of capitalism that uh, democratic socialists were fighting against. And uh, really, you know, where, where there were democratic socialists, uh, the uh, communists would uh, put them in prison as, uh, or shoot them uh, rather than uh, tolerate them. Uh, that's the problem. You see, you, it's one thing to have a, a, a vision of social democracy, and it's another thing to practice it. And you have to be sure that you are open to criticism, open to the uh, opinions of others, the, the feelings, of the experience, the, that's why the, the, uh, a, a syndicalist union, uh, a union uh, that tries to organize on the basis of the workers' rule uh, in, the, in the shop is a, a good basis. Uh, whereas the bureaucratic kind of unions uh, that we often uh, get, uh, the uh, capitalist unions, pro-capitalist unions. I mean, the AFL uh, decided that socialized medicine was a terrible idea. Uh, they also uh, felt that minimum wage was a terrible idea because it all had to be in a contract that the leadership of the union worked out with the employers, which means very often you've got company unions. Well, uh, that's a little lesson that I think is a very precious uh, uh, if you're trying to reorganize uh, your your society. All right. Uh, I'm next. Uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie, yeah. mm -hmm. Eddie, this is getting a little bit too serious around here. <laughs> it has been said, you're a mean one, Mr. Claus. You really are a heel. <laughs> you take advantage of elves and promote exploitation, Mr. Claus. You have taken the birth of our savior and turned it into a money changer. <laughs> You're a mean one, mm. Mr. Claus. Your myth promotes stuff. The more stuff, the better. The more money flows, Mr. Claus. Wait. Mm. There is more economic activity, and trade is a good thing. Hmm. You're a cool one, Mr. Claus. 
your commercial activity makes jobs, your Christmas promotes trade, and trade changes lives, Mr. Claus. I think I have changed my mind. So praises to globalization and capitalism, Mr. Claus. Frankly, I think your socialist and communist philosophy stinks, stanks, stunks. I thought I had some good thoughts. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tim was just trying to mangle everything there, so uh, I'll give it another shot. First of all, uh, let me say that I agree 100% with Frank. We are drowning in plastic shit from China and everywhere else. But seriously, um, I just came from a science Olympiad contest today. Uh, I'm a coach for in my spare time for seventh graders. I've been it for the last 20 years. We teach seventh graders a universal, simple truth. If you're going to solve any problem, whether it's mechanical or a paper problem, a work problem, and solve any problem, you have to first correctly identify the problem. And then you have to correctly identify the solutions. It's the only way you can proceed. But if you don't even acknowledge there's a problem, then you're going to be, you know, uh, wallowing around in the dark. We've tolerated in the last 40 years, this Americans living in a bubble of mythology have tolerated some really, really fascinating things that would be laughable if they weren't a cosmic joke already. Thomas K. Jones in 1983 was driving, flying around the country saying, teaching business leaders, there's no problem with nuclear war as long as every American has his own shovel and can dig his own foxhole. There you go. That's it. The nuclear power industry was brought to us by people in the 1960s that believed we would have 1,600 reactors running on American soil, and the American public is just going to have to have to tolerate one Chernobyl per year on American soil in exchange for cheap electricity. We just recently had a governor run for office saying, $8 an hour is just too goddamn much to pay people. We, we got to get rid of the minimum wage and put people back to work at four or five bucks an hour. Damn right. <laughs> the best return, of many, uh, many uh, political analysts today have commented, uh, financial advisors are advising billionaires, don't put your money in gold or silver. The best investment, the rate of return for a few million dollars here and there is to invest in a senator or a congressman or a federal no. judge. That's, That's the very best place a billionaire can put their money today. Yeah. All, all progress starts with uh, knowledge and facing you know, the reality of what the problem is. We've got a big problem in this country where, where in the last 40 years, we have allowed psychopathic criminals to rise to the top and masquerade as our elected politicians. And they are bought and paid for by other psychopathic billionaires that will just destroy the environment like a, like a mindless shark, eat everything in sight if we don't find some way to control them. There are beneficial solutions being implemented to a lot of problems all over the world. But the American press doesn't cover any of those things. Uh, 10,000 times more light falls on us every day than what we use in energy. We collect one ten thousand with cheap solar panels, we can run the human race with no coal, no oil, no gas, or no nukes. That knowledge has been solid since 2007. Christmas time is the epitome of unregulated uh, capitalism where we're inundated with commercials. Buy this, buy that. I mean, I find it a... The commercials, just the, uh, the total onslaught of the sense is just disgusting compared to what one fellow said. You know, we used to make things, uh, mm -hmm. spend time making yes. something as gifts, which is, you know, I find infinitely better. <sighs> Unregulated free market capitalism produces an expected outcome. It's not a big surprise. It produces 
the, the elimination of middle class, eliminates the middle class, and a massive amount of economic slavery is produced. That's on what free market capitalism does. We're living in, right now, we're living in the, uh, the dream world of Ayn Rand and the people that have promoted Reaganomics. You shovel money to rich people and some of it's supposed to trickle down. Well, uh, let's, let's start facing reality a little bit more and join with uh, the other protesters nationwide that are uh, finally looking to say, why don't we have a $23 an hour minimum wage? Why don't we have universal health care? We could do a lot of these things because they're already being done in many other countries. We just have to find the political will to, uh, to do this. Thank you. Anybody who hasn't come across with any three dollars on the willing to receive. Well, we consume plastic crap, but uh, we're a we're a military economy. Boy, boy. Bombs over everything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my, my Boeing shirt again today. Anyway, uh, yeah, I looked up stuff on the last depression we had in the 30s, and, you know, we, they, we built all... The, the stimulus today, or the last several years, uh, is similar to what they spent on the uh, works projects in the 30s. And they built all kinds of great stuff. Most of your libraries, schools, roads. All kinds of um, park things, just put a lot of people to work and had, we had great jobs here. But unfortunately here, our stimulus money went to buying bonds and giving $3 trillion to Wall Street both brokers and bankers. And so that's trickling into the economy, unfortunately, through Wall Street. So, um, you know, it seems to me that you know, one other economic issue, the $17 trillion debt I think we're at right now, most of it's been pumped up through the Republicans and wars. Um, there's some Obama because of the stimulus stuff, but um, I just think it's a shame. You know, we're probably paying a trillion dollars a year in interest to China or, or banks or wherever, and that could, have went, that could go to a lot of good things this huge debt that was wrecked up by 1% uh, uh, tax cuts and, and uh, military spending and things like that. You're going west. Anyway, um, it seems to me with this income equality uh, also that's happening that if, if there's a, it's a Gilded Age again now, like 100 years ago, where there's huge income inequalities in this country, it seems to me that America worked best in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even in the 90s, when incomes were closer together. The middle class needs to spend money, the middle class has to get paid. Minimum wages have to be increased, and uh, that's just went way out of whack recently, and, and unfortunately Wall Street is the culprit again. Um, uh, one, one other thing about our friends at Wall, on Wall Street, they love China. They, they, you, know, they, they, um, you know, these low-wage uh, products that come over um, just mean better profit margins, better earnings reports, better sales reports for Target, for Walmart, what have you, for Apple. And, uh, you know, their stocks go up, portfolios go up. These brokers and bankers are uh, happy as clams. So... Fortunately, I'm not one of those guys, but I think I'm happy I'm not. Um, last thing here is, um, well, you know, I just spoke to about that we should be making money off of China and some of these other people for uh, well, tariffs and duties on, on their stuff that's coming in since they're uh, not following global laws or human laws. Um, and uh, that's about it, uh, but I have noticed uh, one other thing about the economy, and that's the gas prices and oil prices, and since I follow energy and transportation fuels, um, 
it, I've, I've read something where um, OPEC wants to ruin the fracking industry in this country. <laughs> so everybody's so happy about paying $2 a gallon for gas now, but really what, what's going on here is, is dumping of a lot of crude oil on, on this mar on American market just to ruin the fracking and shale and oil sands markets <laughs> and industries. So it's kind of interesting what messes we get into with globalization. That's it. Charlie gets the last word. I forget what you were giving me a hard time about. I wonder if you're buddies. All right, I don't have much to say. I'm sorry if I went on a little too long, but okay, I'll try to cover some of this. Um, Be a classic, the, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, uh, re regarding um, uh, companies moving, um, that's not like a generic thing. Um, when you negotiate contracts, and I don't do private sector negotiations, but they research the company to the nth degree, and I mean this, I respect these people who do this, and they know every aspect of the business, um, that's why there's a thing called uh, um, industry organizing, where you can run but you can't hide. And they organize all the industries. <coughs> and so it only postpones for a short period, because uh, you can run but you can't hide. And they know a, a good, good, and I mean the negotiators, I have a lot of respect for them, because they know the feasibility of what the company can do and when they ask for this, where their marketplace is, whether or not they have multiple facilities, uh, what the cost attendant to moving is, uh, if the place is going to have a business. I believe you mean, like here, uh, their Foxconn is, uh, is, is controlled by Apple. Apple is not going to have any delay in their production. They could, they are losing money. They could, they sold 97 iPhone, 97 million iPhones in one year. Could have sent double that, but Foxconn couldn't produce it. Now you're going to close that place down. It's not going to happen. That's what I mean. You got to know what, what the particular situation is, and that's where you come in from a position of information and knowledge of what's going on. Uh, it's this cost dependent to relocating. Uh, organizing, yes, is inherently difficult. Um, actually, uh, I should relay a little story. I was involved in organizing the federal employees in 13 southern states, and we succeeded. There had been two previous failures, and the fellow I just worked with him last week, uh, Jack, was very intelligent and very persistent and kept at it and we succeeded. Um, yeah, organizing is not easy. Uh, people who've seen the movie Norm Murray, it, they took eight years to get that company organized. That was not overnight. But moving a company, yes, it's, it's one factor that, and the unions have threats, they have threats, we, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, regarding uh, immigration, I just wanted to add, it's always bothered me, Karina, that companies can move wherever they want, whenever they want, but the people who work in the companies can't. That seems to be a basic unfairness. Um, <laughs> you know, there's something wrong here. The thing about whether or not, oh, life, China, things are better are in China. And let's talk about Asia. We're talking about exploitation of young people and people in danger are getting hurt and dying. This is exploit this is a big scale that I can't I can't quite fathom this altogether. Um, it's not a positive episode <laughs> in the history of the world. Uh, there is no conceivable reason why young people should be made to work more than eight hours a day and not enjoy life. It is not a stage 
there's no second level. There's no reason this is going to change. <laughs> it's like it could continue. I don't think we can sacrifice young people who are working, and they're not all young people either. But it's it's not. I can't play games with ethics that they that this is a positive. This is just there's no aspect of this that I can look at that's positive. Anyhow, I've been invited to give this thing again if you want to hear it again or maybe somebody you know on December twenty first at the Third Unitarian Church in Oak Park. Oh, oh. so ten o'clock with the unis. Is it that that's not Unity Temple on Yeah. It, it is. Yeah, the wow. unis. Oh. So, uh, okay, but thank you. I hope you enjoyed something, learned something, and uh, yeah, we heard, uh, we heard some things. Simplest, you know, the Quakers have that song, uh, uh, it's a gift to be simple, you know, shakers. shakers. Well, shakers. yeah, um, it's kind of cool. We, we don't need all this, this plastic shoes. Yeah, it's spending <laughs> hundreds of dollars, certainly not running up credit cards, <coughs> things like that. And I think if we look back ourselves, what are our fondest memories of the holiday? It's not what the fuck I got, you know. Anyhow, thank you very much. Oh,